All right, so now we're gonna learn about working with data across pages, okay? So if we have multiple, uh, uh, if you want to, if you have one page and you wanna pass data to another page and read some sort of information over there, okay? So let's open our test application now. So uh, we have one uh, repeating group here about the menu items. For this example, let's try and create another repeating group and just use it to display uh, restaurants in the system. So how many restaurants do we have? Let's try and remove these restaurant name, update, delete, no, current cell restaurants, email. Okay, so we should now, do we have any restaurants in the database? I don't think so. We don't have, so let's make a few entries in the database, okay? Uh, and uh, restaurant one and let's make restaurant two it's sometimes really helpful to uh, work with test data and just slowly kind of thing with bubble is it's design logic and data and you, you can't just forget about one and think about the other. You have to take everything together. So we now have two restaurants here. All right. Uh, let's add some address. Okay. So for restaurant two, let's put him in London. And for restaurant one, let's put him in Birmingham. Ah, the UK one. I'm in the UK. Okay, so we now have restaurants address and we don't we have a name. We don't have a restaurant description email, but uh, let's try and add some lorem ipsum description as well. This text is, is quite helpful to fill things up. So another field a restaurant description text and if we add the description here and we should probably pick something else for the other description okay so now that we have our data set up uh, wh what's our goal we were thinking of passing data between pages okay and what do you mean by different pages okay let's say i have this one page which lists all the restaurants okay uh, this is my page of list of restaurants and I'm browsing around and I want to go to a particular restaurant okay so I want to view menu okay so if I want to view the menu of a particular restaurant I'll click this button and it should take me to a different page and I should be able to see that restaurant so how do I move tell restaurant one to that page and that's what we're going to be learning now Okay, so first of all, I'm going to create a new page, which will be a restaurant menu page. Uh, it's just going to start blank now. And uh, what do we want to see here? We want to see the name, uh, the description, the address and then we need want would like to see a repeating group of the menu items correct uh menu items let's avoid menu items okay let's just go with the description for now so uh now one thing about bubble is that you can uh, we we hinted a bit earlier about passing data between groups now this is passing it's the same concept it's just passing data between pages Okay, so we can, uh, if we click on the page element here, page restaurant, so a page is similar to a group, an element, you can call it an element. So a page is an element, it has its own set of properties. Okay, and in this case for the page, uh, we say the type of content is restaurant. Okay, now what this means is that uh, this page, when it loads, it expects that there's a type of content. Okay, and the type of content is passed here in the URL. Okay, so in the URL, uh, what it expects is the unique ID uh, of the restaurant. So the unique ID is uh, each database entry has a unique ID. 
Okay, so each database entry has a unique ID. What this page URL e expects is that unique ID. And what this gives us is it gives us a special variable, current page restaurant. So if I click insert dynamic data, I see current user, but I also see current page restaurant. So that's the variable that the parent uh, has been passed with. So current page restaurant uh, name, and I type uh, current page restaurant address and current page restaurant description. Now, if I refresh the page, restaurant one, Birmingham, UK, there's no description. It should have a description. It may just be, uh, there's no space for the description. Hmm. We did add it, didn't we? Yeah, we do have Birmingham, Lorem Ipsum. It's pretty long. Uh, cut off content, shrink element, height. It's still think it'll just be a size issue. Uh, okay, time for some live debug. So debug mode true. Inspect. Click here. Description. Current page description. Ah, privacy rules. Okay, so this is a good, uh, first of all, the debugger is really helpful. Uh, I'll make another short video about the debugger. That's how you find out. And uh, we added a new field, but we didn't set its privacy rule. So we're going to go to here, restaurant current user is logged in and or everyone else can see description. Okay, so everyone else can see description. Ha! Ah, now we see it. Okay, so now we haven't, uh, okay, let's go back to our original page. The goal was to go from this button to the new page. So that's quite simple. On the button workflow, we just say, uh, go to page and we, uh, the destination restaurant uh, menu and it asks data to send. Okay. And it's like, okay, we pass the current cell restaurant from the repeating group uh, over to here. So if we go back to our index page, so we can click this button now and it's just going to take us to the, it, it automatically passed this, uh, the unique ID here. Automatically pass the unique ID here. I mean, the unique ID can be a bit kind of strange looking. So there is a feature here called page slugs, uh, which uh, you can pass it like, uh, this is what uh, it can be lowercase digits only. And okay and restaurant two. So uh, the unique ID is then replaced with the the nice pretty name by itself. So you can also pass restaurant two and it will still load the same thing as well. Okay, so page slugs are pretty uh, nice and useful as well. So uh, I think, let just to recap, okay, we added a description, we added some dummy entries in the database. We wanted to display a list of restaurants and in a repeating group. And then once we wanted to, uh, we created a new page. Uh, we clicked the page property and set the type of content that the page expects. So the page expects a data source. By default, this is blank. The page doesn't expect a data source to be passed to it. Uh, but you can pass the page a data source. Uh, a data uh, object and once you've done that you can like use the you can use extra dynamic fields here current page restaurant current you can use it in workflows anywhere throughout the page uh, and back in our index page uh, when we click view menu we can uh, go to page and pass that cell reference as well so, so that's how we'll uh, pass data between pages all right so that's it for this video and see you in the next one thanks bye